Hey guys, so today we're pouring brown concrete in this stamp concrete patio. We're going to end up stamping it to make it look like 16 inch barn boards. So make sure you stick around for the whole video. The end of the video I'll show you how we stamp it, how I went and sealed it, and you'll get to see what the final product looks like. Hey, my name's Mike Day. If you don't watch my channel on a regular basis, please consider subscribing. I do all types of concrete work, decorative concrete, slabs, floors, patios, pool decks concrete repair we even do epoxy floor so does it get the whole scope of it on this channel now the homeowner set all this up we actually did all the concrete here his house his garage they're all on slabs very similar to this the house and garage slabs are a little bit thicker but everything's on two inches of styrofoam he's building it himself and he formed up these concrete patios we got this one on back we got another one on front that we're doing that's going to be a different color and a different pattern so if you want to see what an ashler slate pattern looks like i'll have that video you know later on here come coming up down the road so make sure you you know come back and check us out if you want to see that but he set it all up he put the forms up he put the styrofoam down he tied the rebar mat um, so he did a really good job He's actually a heating and plumbing specialist. <laughs> That's He owns his own company doing that. But uh, we've done quite a bit of work for him in the past, and he's always set up his own concrete slabs, done a really good job at it. So we order 4,000 3 concrete with microfiber mesh, uh, water reducer in it, and then we buy the color and we put the color in the concrete. Now I teach you how to do this. I teach you how to pour colored and stamped concrete in the concrete underground. So if you want to learn how to do this in more depth, please uh, check down in the description of the video and I have a link for it down there where you can you can learn how to do stamped concrete. This is probably a little bit too big of a project you want to learn on, but if you got something smaller you want to tackle and try it on your own, I teach you all the basics right in the concrete underground and also my stamped concrete course. Those are two separate things. Um, but if you join the Concrete Underground, that's a monthly subscription, you get the Stamp Concrete course in there. So you get you get that for as long as you're involved. You see the color of this comes out really uniform looking. And it, it actually makes it a little easier, creamier to work with if you want to say. It has a really nice paste and cream to it after you add this color. We really like stamping it. We brown we use a lot we use actually we use gray a lot Con when concrete cures up with no color in it it turns really really light like a light light gray almost kind of whitish so if you want to keep it looking gray on the gray side then you got to add some gray color to it so we use that a lot when we do astro slate uh cobblestone and some of the other stamp patterns but today I'm trying to make it look a little bit like wood so we added some brown to it and that's how we kick screed right there. So this is about five and a half, six inches thick total. We did put some ice, isolation expansion joint up against the house slab foundation. That just helps keep this slab from sticking to that one. If something does want to move independently of the other, one's not going to chip and break up. This is how we're getting the concrete leveled out and screeded. And it does slope about an inch away from the house, all of this. Even though he's got a roof over most of it. Want to make sure it sheds water really good. And that's kind of what it looks like close up as you're screeding it. Now we hold, you know, as we're pulling that backwards, we hold the screed on the back edge a little bit. We don't like cutting it with the front edge. That kind of tears the concrete apart even more so we'll slightly hold it on the back edge as we're putting down pressure on it and this is a really uh, a really accurate way of screening as far as my opinion goes based on some of the other ways I've seen people do it and then once you run that bow float over it everything's really nice and flat and level you we can run the bow float both ways a lot of guys want to run it 90 degrees of how you screed it we don't have to do that the way we screed because we get it so flat so we can just basically go whichever way makes it more convenient so we got the first truck dumped out we got two seven yard loads here we're on to the second truck and what we want is we want the guy on the second truck to mix up with a slump that's just as close as he can to the first truck 
you know, same, basically the same amount of water so the loads don't look differently after they cure up. If you get one load a little bit wetter than the other, there's a chance one might be lighter or darker than the other when you're all done. That's just kind of the chance you take when you're using colored concrete. That might happen no matter what. But in most cases, if you keep the slumps the same, then the color's going to end up looking the same when you're all done. You'll see when I go to seal this at the end of the video, just you won't be able to tell where one truck stopped and when the other truck started. It's always funny looking at brown concrete compared to the regular color that we usually pour every single day. Just brown, looking at brown concrete looks really weird to me. That's probably around a six inch slump. That's a normal pouring slump for us with water reducer in the mix. The water reducer helps uh, make the concrete a little bit more loose without adding water so you don't really lose any strength. If the water reducer wasn't in the concrete mix, that would probably be about a three inch slump just to give you guys a little bit of a comparison. Eric just found a little bit of debris in the concrete so you can kind of after you screed it you can tell if there's something sometimes something will come out you know something will break off in the drum like some old dried concrete or maybe when they're maybe when they're using the loader at the concrete plant to pick up the material the raw material and put it in the bins you know they might pick up some debris or something in there and that ends up be getting in the truck it doesn't happen very often but once in a great while yeah, it's a good thing he caught it right there And that's what it looks like after you bow float it. I'm just trying to be as careful as I can bow floating. We like to get the surface as smooth as we can when we bow float. And then before we go stamping, you know, we'll, we'll hit it again by hand just to smooth it out even a little bit more so we can run the stamps over it then. We got some poly up against the house. We don't want to get any splatters on the house. Now it's really hot. This is a, this is a midsummer day we're doing this. It's about 85 degrees out, it's really humid, and we know this stuff's going to take off on us, so we're really hustling to get this down. 16 inch barn board today, We've got sienna brown in the concrete, integral color. We're going to use a, we'll end up using like a charcoal teak wash, but just, just clear release today. And I believe we're running the planks this way today, long way, so. Um, two loads, hopefully one first one sets up a little bit quicker than the second, gives us time to, you know, get down and work our way this way, but I would say let's check this right now and see how much time we got. I'd say we got an hour probably before we get to start anything, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty soft right now, but we'll have to start early, obviously. Concrete feels pretty warm. It was actually pretty warm coming out of the truck this morning. And let's see what time it is right now. It is 7.10 a.m. 7.10 a.m. So I'd say, you know, we're going to want to start edging and magging probably at least by 8. All right, we'll see you back here in a little bit. Ohio. All right, I'm gonna go out and mag that edge. Then I'm gonna measure over eight foot eight, and then we're gonna snap a chalk line right here, okay? So okay. we gotta put the first board right here. Okay. And we're not too far away from that. So here what we're doing is we're getting our starting point and we're snapping a line in the concrete. What I'm using on the end of my red handles, those inch and a quarter handles, is a little tool called StringX, www.stringxtools.com. If you want to check that out, it's just a it's a handy little way, it's a handy little tool that you can you can add right onto your handles. So if you need to snap a line on the concrete that you can't reach, you can see how it, you just hook your string right to the end of it, reach out wherever you need to go, and then you can snap a line right in the concrete. Now this was pretty convenient for us today because we needed to start right there, right where the string is, so we can work our stamps both to the right and to the left if we need to. And we wanna make sure that 
you know, right where that string is, that the boards line up perfectly with the front edge of that concrete patio you see here right to the left. So that ended up being a really nice way to get the get our line in there. And here we are again, I'm measuring over, I believe it was like six feet, six inches to the corner, which is the same as the corner of the building. And we wanna make sure as we stamp down this front of this patio, this lengthwise, when we get to this point, you know, our stamps want to be right in line with this line that was snapping in the concrete. Yeah, you can see how convenient that makes. Right now the concrete's too wet to get on, so there's no way to really reach out there and get a good line. So that worked pretty good. This is the typical beginning stages of the stamping. You know, once it's firm enough to, to mag out, we'll get on it. You know, we'll use our, our funny float with the handles to get whatever we can reach from the outside. And then usually up against the building, you know, I got to get on there with some skids and make sure that's down really good. And then we, uh, we just start laying stamps when we feel it's ready. Now on something like this, you know, we got quite a, a lineal footage, quite a distance from the right here all the way down to the other end. I call that lineal feet. So you got to kind of start a little bit early earlier than maybe you'd think it's pretty squishy it's pretty soft still but that's just the way you got to do it and you know luke's on there he's got his he's got his stamping shoes on we call those just those are just flat soled shoes that give you a little bit more support under your feet so you don't leave a heel print in there who's this guy huh what oh yes yes what are you doing oh yes what are you doing yeah. What are you doing, big big girl? Uh, big girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have a roller. Look at you, huh? Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you good girl. Yeah, you good girl. That's the homeowner's dog. That's literally the friendliest work dog I have ever met. A yeah, really cool dog. So here we are. There's our straight line. That's what we want to start with. And this part there, that was kind of this part of the patio we're doing that was outside the roof area was setting up a little bit quicker than the part behind us. So it gave us the opportunity just to go from where we start and kind of work our way out and get this part done. And then you'll see us work down the long, narrow section, I call it. Now, when we get everything stamped, you know, we don't, we don't add antique color to the liquid release right now. We're just using plain old liquid release. We got a roller there, a little nine inch roller we're using to like touch up edges and stuff like that. You can see me using it right there, getting up against, well, Darren's using it, getting up against the house. And then we'll add our secondary color at a later stage. You'll see that. Actually, you won't see that on this video, but you'll see it on the next one we're doing when we do the front. But it's we call it uh, texture enhancer, and we use it when we come back. So tomorrow, the day after this day that we're stamping, we'll come back, we'll saw our joints, we'll, and then we'll put our secondary color on it. And that's all done. Again, I teach all that in the course too, so but it's a pretty neat little process for putting your secondary color in and it works really good for doing that. We're trying what we're trying to do is not line up joints. So we want to we want to stagger the joints and sometimes we'll overlap the stamps like that. Those stamps, they're pretty good size. They're big stamps. They cover a lot of area but they're actually a little bit slower process than maybe some of the other stamps because they're big and long and you know they're only, they only cover 16 inches at a time although 16 inches by 7 or 8 feet you know you're covering 10 11 12 square feet at a time which is similar to some of the other stamps we do but it just seems like the process goes a little bit slower when we use these so we want to make sure we're right on the ball as far as just being steady, steady. You, once you start stamping, usually you're not stopping. You know, you've got a small window of time 
to get from one end to the other before the other end of the concrete gets too firm and you end up really pounding in the, the texture, which is what we don't want to do. We don't, we don't want to have to pound the surface too hard. But we do have the tamper and if we do need to go from just our regular body weight, foot weight to the tamper, we will. But right now we're ahead of the game so things are working out pretty good. Those stamps, they're kind of long too in a way that, you know, you kind of need two people to really lay them down. One person can pick it up okay. You just want to gear, grab both ends and pick it straight up. But laying them down, laying them down is a little trickier. You could do it if you had to by yourself. It's just a lot easier with two people. If you were doing something small, you know, maybe let's say you were doing something six by six little front entryway or something you can definitely do something like that by yourself but when you're doing bigger stuff like this really long stuff you, you'll notice that you know one guy will usually pick something up by himself here but usually we'll had a second guy just help put it down we kind of walk it down we put one end down first and then we walk on it and get the next end down oh were well, you gonna do that <laughs> Here's a good shot of us putting that liquid release down. We don't want to spray too far out ahead of ourselves. No. That stuff does evaporate pretty quickly. And there's what that wood grain roller does. It just helps texture edges. Make sure you got really good texture up against the edges. We don't want to pound that edge too hard and make it, you know, fold into the board, I guess, if you want to call it. So if we pre-texture it, and we don't have to tamp quite so hard on the outside edge and then getting up under that trim board too is a little tricky with the stamps sometimes so having that roller that roller just fit under that edge that made it pretty easy to put texture up right up against the house definitely a little bit of a process doing any type of stamping you want to make sure you stay ahead of the game Darren, you can see him right there, the guy in the yellow on the right. He's kind of keeping an eye out after we pick the stamps up, making sure that everything got good texture. Everything's, if something needs to be touched up, you know, he'll touch it up. And it's hard to go back and do it after you pick the stamps up and you're too far away. Uh, it's Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Eric, don't walk on this. Shut up. Yeah, that was a good shot of me kind of pre texturing the edges so when the guys get the stamps over there, they don't have to worry about being too, too fussy getting up under that trim board. You can see how the stamps get up under it. It gets a little tricky to pick up sometimes, pick straight up and then pick the whole stamp up by itself. So that's a pretty good feeling when you get down to the very end, you know, and you haven't had to use the tamper, you just use your body weight. That means we've moved along pretty fast. You know, that was 14 yards of concrete. That? And that's a good shot of just what the texture looks like on those stamps. And what I'm doing, I'm just touching up some of the joints. We go back and we'll pre-roll, you know, we'll roll some of the boards over again if we need just to touch up some areas but it all has a little bit of texture there's some areas that aren't quite as heavy in texture as others that's just the way the stamp is but when you're all done said and done you'll see here all right that came out pretty good so see what time it is now I think we got done pouring at 7 10. it is 9 30 in the morning right now so about two hours from when we got done pouring to when we got it all stamped it was set up pretty good so tomorrow we'll come back and we'll saw our cuts in tomorrow we'll wash it and we'll, we'll teak wash it we'll antique it give it the color and then the next day we can come back and spray the sealer on it and then that'll be it but tomorrow we're also pouring the front so we'll see you guys back here in the morning all right, so this is a few days after the pour. You can see those lighter areas that in texture on the pour. You can't even notice them now. They all have texture. It all looks like really good wood grain. 
So we're spraying our sealer on. Um, I'll tell you, I, the sealer I use is also, you know, we, I tell you that in the Concrete Underground about what we use, why we use it, and where we get it. It's a really good sealer. We haven't had any trouble with it over the past few years. Um, it's the best sealer I feel for using on stamped concrete. So you can, you can find out what that is in the Concrete Underground too. And I like doing two to three coats on this minimum, really light coats. You can see what that's going to end up looking like, you know, after we do the secondary, we did charcoal for a texture enhancer to get our second secondary color. So the main color brown, charcoal for the secondary color, and that gives it the wood look right there. But anyway, guys, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Let me know how you think this looks in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.